Hello everybody, today I'm going to be making a uh, take on macaroni and cheese using a few silly noodles which I've already cooked off and some uh, salted water and I got those uh, waiting by so let me just explain what I'm going to be using for this uh, macaroni and cheese today what I've got uh, right here is uh, a bunch of mushrooms, I've got some button mushrooms I've got some oyster mushrooms and I've got some baby portobellos, which are also called cremini. Here I've chopped up some shallots, two shallots to be exact. Um, here's a mixture of thyme and rosemary that I've chopped up that will go with the mushrooms. And here we got some parsley. So let me just show you. This here is our oyster mushroom. Alright, here's our lovely button mushroom, which is used for everything. The versatile mushroom. And here's our tasty uh, mini bella. So let me just chop these up. Before I do that, let me just show you something. I've got a rag here, which I've dampened a bit. And I'm just rubbing the mushrooms just a little bit to get off the excess dirt. You don't want to soak them in water because mushrooms will soak up all the water and when you put them in the pan all the water will come out and you will not get a good saute so let me just chop these up the last of my mushrooms alright so now that we got all the ingredients it's time to make the macaroni and cheese the macaroni and cheese so what I got here is a little bit of milk that's just warming up and I've put in some bay leaves and I've also put in some peppercorns as well and we're going to strain that out afterward to that mixture to that mixture right now I'm going to put in a little bit of nutmeg oh, a good helping of nutmeg alright now let's heat up this uh, pan right now and we'll put a little butter in there. This is going to be for the mushrooms and the onions. And afterwards, I'm going to add a little flour as a thickening agent, which will make this a roux. Which is usually um, one part butter and one part flour, so equal parts. That is the oven which I just set at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Alright, so this is uh, melting and getting warm. And our milk is scalding, well, getting there. Um, let me get all my ingredients and bring them over. We got my mushrooms here. Looks like a lot of mushrooms, but it'll go down by a lot. Now, when you're cooking mushrooms, and not so much onions, but when you're cooking mushrooms, you have to make sure that the temperature is really, really hot on your saute pan or on your pot right here because mushrooms will let out their water if it's not hot enough and it will just get soggy and they will not saute properly and they will not brown and caramelize the way you want alright so now we can see that my butter as you can see is foaming up and bubbling. So it's time to put in our ingredients. Our shallots that I've chopped that I sliced and our sliced mushrooms as well. Now you know what I don't think I need all of it. Ah, uh, why not? Why not? If I don't need them after I'll take them out. Let that saute on high heat. You 
The mushrooms, like I said, will let out some water, so don't add too much butter to it. Too much liquid. But because I want to get a roux after, I need to put in some more butter. Now, to this mixture, I'm going to add my herbs because sautéing the herbs will bring out the flavor of the herbs much more than uh, just adding them at the end. Now, the parsley cannot go in right now. I'm going to leave the parsley at the end. As you can see already, see all this liquid is in here, and the mushrooms have wilted down by a whole, by a lot. Put it even higher. Drop some of that liquid. So as we can see, our mushrooms have gone down. They've wilted like crazy. And I'm gonna take them out now. Transfer them into a bowl and just keep them on the side. Our mushrooms and an onion. Now that my pan is clean, we can make the roux, which is, like I said, equal parts butter and flour, but I am going to wing it. This will be what thickens our bechamel. So as you can see, our butter is almost melted, so I'm going to add the flour in one second. Let's just continue melting this butter. Okay, let's add our flour and cook it to a paste. Now, cooking it longer will add a more um, caramelized flavor to the butter. So you can cook it as long as you feel like, just don't burn it. Alright, this is what we want in our roux. Not too thick, not too liquidy. So now I'm going to pour in the milk. You know what, let's get a whisk over that to whisk out any lumps. Alright, that's good. Add the rest of it. Let's add it a little bit at a time. Turn the heat back on. That'd be good. Add it all. That. Get this in, in the sink. No. We're just going to let that sit a little bit and thicken up. Now, personally, bring it down a bit. Personally, I like a lot of milk because when you bake off, because we're going to be baking off this macaroni and cheese. So when you bake it off, it tends to uh, lose some of the liquid, and you get less of a sauce, and you get, and I like it to be more creamy, and more saucy, if you will. Here, we've got our pan, and I have some fusilli noodles that I've already cooked, like I said before. Now, traditionally, you have to cook these noodles um, to la dente, but for this recipe, you have to cook them a little bit slightly 
before al dente, when they're still a little hard, because they're going to be going back in the oven and cooking a little bit longer. So while we're waiting for this milk to thicken up, I am going to, which I had forgotten before, and season my mushrooms. When you're doing a recipe like this, you should season at every level. A little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. Don't put too much salt because I'm putting a lot of cheese in there and it'll get very, very salty. Cheese has a lot of salt in it. Parmesan, uh, more than the others. So just mix that around a bit and there you go. All seasoned up. So the milk is doing its thing. Um, I've also got, while we're waiting, I've got some chapeleur. They're called breadcrumbs in English. And I'm going to be putting a little bit of breadcrumbs on the top of the um, casserole or macaroni and cheese, whatever you feel you want to call it, uh, right before I put it in the oven. So, continuing to thicken up. Um, okay, so at this point I'm going to add in a little bit, well, not a little bit, all of my cheese. Put that aside. Dump all your cheese in. Try not to splash yourself it's like I am, because it's hot and give that a good whisk. Give it a little taste. A little more. A little more Parmesan. A little pepper. Making a mess here. A tiny bit of salt. Very good. Now that that's the consistency that I like, so what I'm going to do is add in the mushrooms. Use my fingers. Not a very good thing to do. And just mix that around. And then wash your hands. I've got my casserole with the noodles in them. In it. I'm just gonna pour this mixture over the noodles. Get out every last bit. Now what I'm going to do is mix it up a bit because all the mushrooms now are on top. A bit more pepper on top. Clean up a bit. A little of my parsley. Some of these lovely breadcrumbs. Okay, a lot of these lovely breadcrumbs. A little more Parmesan on top. And the rest of the parmesan. Uh, the rest of the parsley, that is. And we are going to stick this in the oven till it's brown on top. Right, so I've just taken this out of the oven. It's all nice and brown and caramelized on the top. 
So there you have it. There you have it, folks. Yeah, there it is. That simple. So please, forget about the Kraft macaroni and cheese. And think about this baby. Alright? Give it a try.